Hi everyone, Professor Z here. In this video, we're going to talk about the depth of field assignment. I'm going to go through and show you examples right there on the screen. You see my camera. I have a live view going from this camera right here onto the screen. So you can actually see what I'm doing as I'm changing my settings. A couple settings to set before we start this. Make sure right now I'm in manual mode. So on the top dial, I have it set to M. I'm also going to show you how to do this in aperture priority as well, but we're going to start in manual. And also make sure your white balance is correct for your lighting conditions. I'm doing this inside my studio here. I have my studio lights, I should say, in my office, which are set to daylight. So I have the daylight preset here, and you can actually see this. This is my camera settings on the left here, and there's my white balance at daylight. I do recommend doing this outside because we are going to need a lot of light for this project, so unless you have your own lighting source, this is going to get kind of hard to do without extra light. I also want to make sure my picture quality is set properly. Now normally I just shoot everything in RAW files. That allows for higher quality in post-production and I can do a lot more with it. However, for this assignment, I really just want to be able to take the nine photos I want to use for it and upload them to my website. And I cannot upload RAW files. I can only upload JPEGs. And we haven't gotten to the part where we talked about converting RAW to JPEGs yet. So to skip that step and make it a little easier on yourself, in your camera settings for picture quality, make sure it's on RAW plus standard, which means it's going to record a RAW and a JPEG file at the same time. That way you can save all these in RAW and use them later for something else, but at least you have the JPEGs that you can easily upload to your website right away. So with that out of the way, uh, the other thing I am doing, my focus mode is a manual. So on my camera, I actually just turn this little dial on the back here and it'll go to manual settings. Uh, however your camera does it, whether you're using the Lumix or Sony, Canon, Nikon, whatever it is, all these settings are the same. They just might be in a different area. Um, I'm using manual because I want to be able to make sure I'm focused on the proper thing here so I can just turn my dial on my lens here and focus in. Now I'm purposely using a fixed focal length lens here. I'm using a 50 millimeter so that way I know I can't, I can't cheat with the zoom or anything and I know I'm going to stay the same the whole way. Now for this assignment, the camera and your objects don't move. Make sure you're always taking the picture from the same location. I'm using the tripod here just so my hands are free for this. But I want the composition to stay the same. I set a couple of things up as objects to take pictures of. This is what you're going to want. You're going to want something in the foreground. In this case, I have this camera lens here that's in my foreground. Um, I have a couple things right behind it. And I have in the distance there is a, a light hanging off my light stand. And I have some stuff on the shelf over there, like a pencil jar or whatnot. Uh, some empty printer cartridges. That's my junk pile over there. Ignore it. Uh, and my, my printer's a little dusty, so... Please excuse that. Now, I've already kind of moved everything into where I want it. I want to compose the frame first. You can see on my camera, I actually have the rule of thirds up on the screen. So that way I can always, it's just the easier. Why, I mean, why not? It's, it's an overlay you can put it on. There's nothing wrong with cheating to make sure you get good composition because this photo looks better than this photo just by having it on that rule of thirds line. Maybe if I move this this way a little bit, you know, Moving your camera makes a photo a lot better just by making those little movements. So for this assignment, you want to have nine photos at the end of the day to make a, a grid on your website, which I'm going to go through in this video as well. But first I want to start with my aperture, which is right here is represented by this at my widest open setting. On this lens, it happens to be 1.7. It's going to vary based on your cameras. If you're using something like the Lumix FZ300 or a, a kit lens that doesn't have what we call a constant aperture, meaning as you zoom in with the lens, the aperture automatically changes to the lowest setting for that zoom length, you want to make sure you stay at one focal length and preferably the widest setting. That way you can get the widest open aperture. So have your lens zoomed all the way out if you are using a zoom lens and have it at the most open aperture to start with. And then we're going to start dialing it in. Now, unfortunately, one thing you can't see on the preview on my screen here is actually uh, my exposure level on the camera. So at the bottom of my screen here on the camera, I have a plus minus scale, plus three, minus three to show if I'm overexposed or underexposed. So pay attention to that while you're doing this. In fact, I just set my uh, shutter speed to 2500 here and I'm at beyond negative three for my exposure. So I want to make sure we start where, oops, that's going way too fast for me. Okay, I actually just moved a light real quick to get some more light over here because it wasn't, it was really underexposed a lot. So right now my ISO, you can see here is at 200, which is the lowest for my camera. I can't go lower than 
ISO 200. And I'm trying to avoid using the auto settings on this. So I want to use all manual settings for this example. So right now, if I take this picture at f1.7, uh, shutter speed of 30, and ISO 200, and I take the picture, it looks like this. Now you can see I have already focused in on that lens, and everything else, even this right here is a little blurry, the tape, and the, uh, the lamp here, and then the light over here is really out of focus. You can't even tell what's on the shelf over here. So again, I just made sure this is in focus. And that's what those blue lines are, by the way. If you see the blue lines on your camera, don't freak out. Your lens is not broken. That is a focus assist feature. It's showing you whatever is sparkling blue on this camera. Other cameras might be red or orange. That's just telling you what's in focus. So by it's sparkling, it's telling me that, yes, that lens is in focus. So if I go the other way, uh, now everything's out of focus. Let's see if I can get like, the tape in focus. Other things will start to sparkle, but we're just, I want this to be in focus, so we're going to keep it here. Now, 1 30th of a second for shutter speed is actually really slow and something you wouldn't want to do handheld. So instead of adjusting anything else right now, I'm actually going to adjust my ISO. So I want to bring my ISO setting to 400 and see what that does. Now I can see on my screen at 30 frames, I'm actually overexposed. So I'm going to up this to 60. You know, our exposure is actually really good now. It's actually kind of the same what we had the first time. However, 60 is also really hard to handhold. So if you're hand holding, you want to be a little higher. I like to be around 200 or 250 for hand holding. So let's just set it to 200, which is going to leave me very underexposed on my meter. So I'm going to up my ISO again to 800. If I look down here, now I have good exposure. ISO 800 is perfectly acceptable. You're not going to be too high. And there it is. That's a nicely exposed photo. Now let's go ahead and change our aperture setting. I'm going to just change this. I'm going to go up a little bit to aperture 2.8. Say there's a lot of steps here. We're not going to do every single step. And if I just take this without adjusting anything else, let's see what it looks like. Now you can see that we're underexposed. It's still actually a nice photo, but it's way too dark with all the items in it. So I need to adjust my aperture, I mean my ISO again. And I can see now I'm a little better here. Let's take that picture. And that's better exposed. So I'm going to go ahead and move this again. And this is why this is good to do this outside where you have plenty of light. Because as I start getting up here, Take this picture, again, with my ISO where it was. See, it's too dark again. So it's a cat and mouse game. I'm constantly adjusting my aperture, I mean my ISO, I'm sorry, to adjust for it. But what's going to start happening is I'm going to start getting a grainy image. And that's just not going to look good. I only want to bring my ISO up so high. In fact, it would be better to slow down my shutter speed and take that picture and get a better exposed photo. So I want to keep doing this. I'm going to go up to like F8 now, we'll say, or maybe 6.6, .6, somewhere in the middle here. I can see I need to slow this. Luckily, I'm on a tripod, so I can slow down my shutter speed without it being an issue. And I'm actually using my computer right here to take the pictures, so I have a little bit of advantage. And you can see things are starting to come in focus. The tape is in focus. The lamp is a little bit more in focus but we still have the backgrounds out of focus. And they're not even that far away. Now let's go up to like F11. And I'm really gonna slow my shutter speed down here. Again, advantages to a tripod is I don't have to worry about that. I can take that picture and now, look at that. You can Now you can start seeing the junk. There's a box for my other lens that I just bought recently, all sitting there. And for fun, we're just going to go all the way to F22, in which case I really need to slow this shutter speed down, or or I can increase my ISO, or I can do both. It's a, it's a mixed match. You, there's no one way to do everything. 
take that picture. There it is. Now you can see though, let's zoom in a little bit here. This is the problem with doing higher ISOs. So I'm at ISO 6400 and you can see the graininess starts to appear when we get that high. So that's why it's better to be outside with more light for this assignment. So you can have that instead of having to increase your ISO so high. Now let's change it up. I'm going to go back to uh, my first after setting here. I'm going to change my mode dial. I'm going to put this to aperture priority because that's what we're doing. We want aperture priority and I'm going to actually put this into intelligent ISO. Ooh, this is, this is scary. When I'm in this setting where I'm in aperture priority and I have put the ISO to auto, which I wouldn't always recommend. It's situational. I wouldn't do this all the time. As I go through the aperture settings, you're going to see that my shutter speed is going to change automatically. So we'll go ahead and take this one. That looks great. And you can see when it's a low ISO, see there's not a lot of noise there when it's lower ISO compared to the last photo we just took. All right, let's adjust this up to like 2.4. I'm, I'm gonna do this part for my lens because sometimes it's just easier doing it this way. That's 4.0, 7.1, 10, 14. Let me move this to the side so you can see. The shutter speed is going down there, so this is now 1 eighth of a second. One fourth of a second. And actually, I'm going to take this with a Watch this. That's a little blurry because just the move of my hand to taking that picture on the shutter there makes it blurry. But if I take it remotely with my camera, now it becomes sharp. Let's go all the way to F22 and take it with the, there. Now that's nice and sharp. Everything's in focus. And we've done our photos. And that's how we do an aperture priority. It's, it's a nice. Um, feature. I like using aperture priority when I'm doing events because I don't have always have time to change everything. So now that we've done this and we got everything in here, let's go through how to take the JPEG images that we just did and put them on our website. Now one last thing I want to know, because a lot of times people try to get really close to the object when they're taking the pictures, every lens on it has a minimal fo focus. Oops, my camera's falling down on me. I'm going to take the lens off real quick. Every lens has on it a minimal focusing distance, which means that your object that you're taking a picture of has to be at least that far away before it'll take the picture. So if you're not, oops, excuse me. If you're uh, trying to focus on something and it's just not focusing, it could be that you're too close to the object and you need to just back up a little bit. Let's close this down. And I'm going to go ahead and take the SD card out of my camera, put it in my card reader. It's right here, Lumix, that's my SD card for this. And I'm going to open up this hard drive here. I'll open up on my other screen there. And we'll just go through. This is what I just do for every single project I ever do. So this is. So we're going to make a new folder here in my 102 folder. Call this depth of field. And I'm inside there. That's so this is my external hard drive. Over here on the right is the SD card from the camera. And this DCIM folder, that's where you want to go into. And I go into it again. And you can see it's taking the raw and JPEG files. I'm just going to uh, Command A inside here that can, copies everything or captures everything. I'm going to then let go inside here and it's going to drop everything in. So that's good. But now you see it's JPEG raw, JPEG raw. If you sort by kind, 
it'll now have all the JPEGs together. And on a Mac, if you click on it and just hit the space bar, you can preview it, which makes it really nice and easy to go through. So there's, these are my photos from the first set here. Now, let's open them on the website. And I'm in my website editor here. And I want to go ahead and make a new gallery. See, I already have one down here, but I'm going to make a new one as an example. Oh, let's delete that. We don't need that there. So now to get this in here, I'm going to drag a gallery over, drop it in here and then click on the Upload Images area. And now I can drag my images into this area. And sometimes it doesn't like it. Let's try it again. It still didn't like it that time. So if it doesn't work that way, click on Upload Files, and then just navigate to your hard drive the same way you normally would. And now it's going to upload the files. So here we are. And now I see this one. I'm actually going to get rid of this one. Oops. I'll go away, pop up. I can't see what I'm doing. This one is too much. Or too dark, I should say. Oh, hey. And then this one. Those three I need to delete. So you should end up with a nine, uh, three by three grid here. So it's nine pictures all together. I'm gonna hit publish. Come over here to this page, I'll refresh. Always test your stuff afterwards. And what's great about the galleries, you click on the first one, it's gonna become large like this and you can go through them in order. And that's how they should look. The one last piece of information I want you to add which is why it's good to pick out your nine before you upload it, is I want you to add your shutter speed and your aperture. As in the example above, you can see that they have listed the shutter speed and aperture for each of these. So you simply click on one of these and go to your caption area and you can type that in. Now, how do you find that information out? Great question. So here's that same image in my folder here. If I right click and say, get info, on this get info area, you'll see here is my aperture and here is my shutter speed. So I can simply say f 1.7 at 1 30th and done. And I want to do that for all those. So again, when I hit publish, I'll refresh it here. When I click on it, on the bottom, it's going to tell me the aperture and shutter speed for those. And that's how you're going to do the depth of field assignment. Please email me if you have any questions.